Hello everyone, um, I'm Aphrodite Psara. And I'm Audrey Brio. And you just watched our um, video performance listening space, uh, which uh, is basically a collection of archival material of, material of um, NOAA satellite recordings. Um, we started this project uh, last year during the e-textile spring break camp in upstate New York, which is a, a sort of one week residency program for um, electronic textiles practitioners. And um, me and Audrey already knew each other from similar, um, similar events in the past. And um, we decided to collaborate in this project that um, allowed us to explore our interests in um, detecting um, radio frequencies. I, in the past, I had worked uh, with uh, electromagnetic field detection through wearables, and um, I was really interested in uh, using the body as a way to um, sense the invisible um, universe that surrounds us. And Audrey, you want to talk a little bit more about your interest in the project? Yeah, my interest in the project is like a fortitude to to catch some stuff that we can't see and we can't imagine, but they are around. And the, the other thing is also something that we share is to turn them into archives, into things that are physical, uh, instead of in the past, for example, there were only waves. And so together with the project, we made these decodes, but we also then turned them into archives in textile that we have uh, knitted together. Um, even though today we only share the video of an archive of the recordings themselves and some of the decodes, I do have a sample of the knit right here that I can share. Maybe I have to stand up. Uh, you can't really see the whole thing, um, but basically we have converted the image into like, um, yeah, a machine knit, which we created uh, using a hacked knitting machine. And maybe you want to tell a little bit more about that process, Audrey? Yeah, we used this machine also because it was part of the e-textile spring break. It was one of the machines we have there. And it's a machine I really love to use because the, um, we can consider that each needle on the knitting machine is a kind of pixel and it can turn something into a black or white pixel or even more. But I think black and white are more interesting because you can translate this into one and zero. And so when we try to restart to collaborate at the spring break, the first decode we, we did was very, very noisy. And we defined them as being some satellite ECATs in reference of the textile technique where you can have like this color with a very blurry and you can't really see the real picture inside. Um, we have this result because we First, we, we just start. So we just create some antenna following some tutorial online. And we tried to, we, we did some dipole antennas. And but the first time we, we tried to have it was so strange. Like you just hold an antenna on, out, like outside or upstairs and you wait for something. And the two, first time we did it, it was very, very noisy. And so I think one of the knitting that Aphrodite showed you is one of these. And, but after a while, we got something which was looking like clouds. And this was totally crazy for us. Um, so, maybe. so yeah, through this process, it became a sort of ritual for us to like, um, chase satellites and this past summer in preparation for this performance that you just watched, um, we were recording on a daily basis. Um, and I guess we also, um, through our networks, we came in touch with uh, Sasa Engelman and her collaborator Sophie Dyer, and we saw the Open Weather Project, and we're really excited to 
meet more people that are working uh, with the field of uh, like using SDR and recording NOAA satellites. We also saw the work of Adriana Nuf, and um, it really inspired us that there's a whole community of other artists out there working within the same um, with the same ideas and using the same techniques. And we also um, we also met uh, some of the people from the Libra Space Foundation and Satnogs, and we applied for a grant that we won last year. It was a uh, an art and science award called Ber Bergstrom Award. And uh, our aim was this past spring to have Audrey visit me in Seattle at the University of Washington, where I um, teach, and spend a whole month there doing a residency and developing the next step of the project, which would be making our own wearable antennas instead of just using the dipoles um, that we initially used. Uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we had to postpone our uh, plans for next year. But we already started prototyping a little bit um, on these wearable antennas. And I would like to share, we would like to share some of our designs together with you and maybe just do a small like demo with uh, cubic SDR of how we use the antennas. So I'm going to start with this one. Actually, this one was the first antenna, wearable antenna I made for FM sensing mostly. Um, it's a half uh, four finger dipole antenna. It is worn at the back. Like I can also maybe show it better. Uh, it is made with a copper conductive fabric. Um, and this works great with FM radio. And the next antenna I made uh, was actually a more recent one, which is uh, using a brass conductive thread and it's worn, it's like a modular antenna and it's worn here. And in the meantime, Audrey, you want to show your antenna and I can show also a demo of this one. Yeah. So for me, something which was very like, sad is to have the computer with you every time you want to record something. So I start to use this uh, Android cell phone uh, with an adaptator and then the SDR. And so, as you can see in the video, I did some recording like with this. So it's way more interesting because you can go anywhere uh, with the cell phone. And I think this is a big step for wearable maybe. And so most of the time I was using this kind of antenna, but uh, I, I did a test once with a t-shirt and wearing the antenna on the sleeve, a bit like Aphrodite, but the wrong thing I did, I think, was that the antenna had to be in my back. And I think my head and my whole body was involved in the field, in the senior. So it was not working properly. And so re more recently, I did this antenna, but I didn't have time yet to test it. And that same, I'm not very sure it would work perfectly because the textile is very soft and we have to deal with many difficulties with the material itself. So, Aphrodite, <laughs> you're online. Yeah. Um, so, I'm going to do a very quick demo of uh, this antenna and uh, maybe then share with you guys the archive that we have online and then we can take some questions. Um, so, I'm going to switch into screen sharing mode. Um, and I'm going to open Cubic SDR. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, perfect. So this is the uh, RTL SDR module that we're using. I'm going to turn down the volume because it's going to be loud. 
All right. Uh, so normally uh, we to, to pick up the NOAA satellite recordings, we go to one thirty seven point one or point six two or point one uh, nine one two five. Uh, let's say six two is the NOAA um, fifteen. But uh, unfortunately, right now there's no like pass happening. There's there are some signals that. Um, you see that that are probably like some other signals, but we would like to test it with some FM radio to show you how it works. So maybe I'll just go to. Oh, this here is probably a yeah. Okay. So maybe I'll just. So here you can see the waterfall. I didn't hear the first part of the show this morning, but did you guys mention anything? So, I don't know if you can see, but, like, basically yes. this is yes. all yes. being um, sent through so the dipole wearable antenna. And, and, just kind of bring you back to that awful day. Yeah, and I, we I, used I Cubic SDR to it's, it's record, thing, and then, actually, um... I'm happy to see the posts on Facebook about it. Uh, and then uh, I have a Macintosh computer, so I'm using the NOAA APT uh, decoder, and Audrey is using the um, uh, W2X image yeah. decoder. Yeah, and when I'm using this, the cell phone, I'm using SDR Touch on it. Um, it's very, very interesting. <laughs> So two more things we want to show really quickly, and then we can go to questions. Uh, we have created a GitHub, um, github.com AFRDT slash listening space, where we have um, some information about the project, a link to a paper we wrote last year about it. Um, and we have here all the decoded images from our recordings that are available to anyone that wants to download and do something with them and we also have created a playlist on uh, soundcloud where you can play back all the recordings you can listen to them and download them from there the link is also available on the github um so yeah i think that's it and we can take some questions